Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today for giving us opportunity to gather in your presence, to worship you, to praise your name, to glorify you. Because you are our God, our Savior, our protector, our defender. You died on the cross 2,000 years ago. You shed your blood for the forgiveness of mankind. Today, we thank you, Lord, for that blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. In the name of Jesus, that blood washes away our sins. That blood defends us from every demonic attack. Now, Jesus, I sprinkle that blood over this house and over every member of the church. In the name of Jesus, Father, this morning, I commit myself into your hand. Use me as a vessel of honor to glorify your name, to bless your children. Spirit of the living God, speak through me, empower me, and let the name of the Lord Jesus be glorified. Satan, I know you are here. Every activities of the enemy, whatever your plan, I get this morning service. I bind that power in the name of Jesus. I render your work useless. And I sprinkle the blood over this house. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. 
Amen. God bless you. Uh, this morning, we want to thank God for giving us opportunity to come before his presence and to glorify him. It is an opportunity. Many people want to be here with us, but they are not. So if you are here, consider yourself blessed. Because the Bible says, blessed are those who hear the word and do them. Today, we are going to share the word of God, which I entitled, Divine Restoration. And I'll be taking my first reading from Job chapter 42, the verse 12. And the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of ox, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons. And three daughters. Amen. Divine restoration. God is a God who creates all things. He also has the power to restore. The test before us. He talk about a man by name Job. The Bible says Job was a righteous man. A man who feared God and walked upright. But Satan had a secret agenda against Job. Because Job was a worshiper of God. He was a man that feared God. He was a man that praised. He was a man that walked upright. Satan does not fear God. He does not hate. The devil is looking for the righteous people. Those who worship God. Those who serve God. And those who fear him. Sometimes here people are saying, I have fasted, I have prayed. Why is it I'm going through what I'm going through? Satan does not fight what belongs to him. The unbeliever, those who are not born again, they are the property of Satan. But you, those who are born of God, saved by the blood of Jesus, you are the target of the devil. Though Job did not sin, the Bible says every day, Job has to offer sacrifice to God to plead God for mercy and forgiveness for himself, the wife, and the children. Yet, Satan decided to try him. He went to God. The Bible said, a day came that when the sons of God they met themselves together. Satan was in their midst. And God asked Satan, did you consider my servant Job? There's no man like him. He's an upright man. A man that fear God and serve me. Satan said to God, does Job fear thee for none? You have blessed him. You build a wall of fire around him. That is why Job fear you and serve you. Take away the defense. Take away his property, his children and see whether Job will not curse thee and die. God said to Satan, I have given Job to you but his soul do not touch. Sometimes God is a God who trusts his children. He knows who you are. He knows your capability. He knows what you can handle. Because the Bible said that there's no temptation that God will allow in your life that can overtake you. Any challenge or temptation or trial you are going through, God knows the reason why he allowed it. God knew very well that you overcome it. God knows Job very well. He allowed Satan to try him. Satan went in the house of Job, destroyed his children, take away his wealth, leaving Job with nothing. To the extent that the wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Sometimes when you are even going through some challenges, some trials, if you don't take time, even the people who are close with you, that the one you think he can encourage you, the one you think he can be a help to you, Satan can even use the very person to discourage you. If you don't take time, your hope in God will be lost. But the Bible said, Upon all that Satan have done, Job did not give up. Though the wife said, are you still holding your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? And Job said, you do not understand. Everything that I have is from God. I came with nothing and nothing I will return. God, he gave me the children. He gave me the wealth and he took them back. Glory be to his name. Job, instead of cursing God, instead of complaining and murmuring, Job was praising God. 
Job was thanking God. Sometimes our murmuring, our complaint, delay the blessings of God. Job rather praise God. Job rather thank God. How many of you that will pass through the challenges of Job and still go to church and still praise God and still dance for the Lord? Sometimes we always talk about Job. Some people even name their children Job. But are they able to stand like Job? Did I have faith like Job? Can they walk like Job? The name you carry doesn't matter. It is what is inside you. Because the Bible said, God look at the heart, not the outward appearance. Many people, when they see lion roar, they will run away. But we have men like David. They are not afraid of their life. Even in the midst of the lions, they still trust God. They are ready to lay down their life for their sheep. David had to fight with lions and bear. He came out victoriously. That is why when he saw Goliath, he knew the same God who helped him to defeat the lions and the bear. The same God will help him to defeat Goliath. This morning, every Goliath, every Satan, every attack against your life receive power to overcome it in the name of Jesus. Satan is a liar. He can never defeat you. He knows that Jesus defeated him 2,000 years ago. All that Satan is doing is to intimidate you, is to put fear in you. But those who know their God, the Bible said, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. It is you knowing God that makes you strong. It's you knowing God that makes Satan fear you. It's not about you going to church or reading your Bible. It's about knowing God, doing close to God. Allow God to control your life, your actions, your inactions. So whoever I am is God. Just like Esther said, I will go to the king. If I perish, I perish. Go home, fast for me. I and my servants will also fast. I will go to the king. That's not according to the law. But I know the God that I serve. He said the heart of every man is in God's hand. And not if we fast and pray, if I go to the king, God will take the heart. And everything that Haman had devices against the Jews will be reversed back. Esther and the Jews, they fasted, they went to the king. Everything that Haman had plot against the Jews was reversed back. That is why today, every plot of the devil against your life, I guess your business, I guess your finances, I reverse it in the name of Jesus. You will not give up. You will not die. You will not fail. It doesn't matter whatever you are going through now. That's what the Bible said. God does not count your beginning. He always look at the end of your beginning. Job fear God. He served him. Then Satan went to God again. The Lord, my first attack against his children, his wealth, his business, I failed. I did not succeed. Because I know that Job confidence and trust is not in the children, it's not in the business, but his body. Give me power to touch his body. Let me put sickness in him so that bone to bone, flesh to flesh, I will touch him. I will put him in pain and see whether Job will not curse you, God. He will not deny you. And I thank God for the life of Job. God is looking for the Job of our time, of this end time. How many of you that were lost? Your sons and daughters, your properties, yet you are still going to church. You are still praising God. Then look at you. One disappointment. He said, I will not serve God. If a year by this time, and God didn't answer my prayer, if I'm not married, I will not go to church again. If God didn't give me a car, I will not go to church again. If I didn't travel, I will not go to church again. But look at Job. He lost his children. Not only that, he also lost his wife. When the wife saw that everything Job had, was gone. The wife too also left him. Job was left alone. Thinking about his life. All that Job know is that, God, I know you are my redeemer. I know you can change my life. I know that you can reverse my bad time. I know you can take away these calamities. I know you are able. If you are able to create the heavens and the earth, if you are able to make the sun and the moon and the earth, what about these things? You can do it again. Are you able to walk with God like Job? The Bible said, and Job walk with God, even his friends. They said, Job was a sinner. It's only sinner that go through in this world of our time. If you go through challenges, if you lost your children, 
Lots of business. They will tell you that you are an occultic man. You have used your children for sacrifice. But Job believes in God. He knows that with God, all things are possible. He trusts God. Though he lost everything, he still has faith in God. They began to curse him. You are a sinner. That is why God has rejected you like this. But Job did not give up. He still believed in God. He still prayed. He still trusts God. That is why he said in Job 14, 14, they said, if a tree dies, has he live again? He said, yes, he will live again. Through the ascent of water, that tree can revive again. He said, all the days of my hard time, I will wait till my time come. This morning, change is coming to your business. Change is coming to your marriage. Change is coming to your company. This 2020, COVID-19 will not stop the church. COVID-19 will not destroy your business. COVID-19 will not destroy your children. The God who protects Job, the same God will protect you in the name of Jesus. You will live and not die. Job trusts God and believes in God. According to Job 42, and the Lord bless the latter part of Job than is the beginning. Sometimes when you see trials, when you see challenges, when you see disappointment, it means that God has something bigger for you. When God wants to bless a man, he will allow him or her to go through trials. Trials are preparation. Trials are the platform. We go stand to bless the believer. If God bless you without challenges, Satan will accuse you for injustice. This man, he's not qualified for that blessing. Job stood for his faith in God. He honored God with his children. His wife, even his own flesh. He said, even this body even died. I know I will see God. Some of us, that's that challenge, that sickness, that disappointment. You want to commit suicide. You want to give up. Brother, don't give up. Sister, don't give up. There's something better God is preparing for you. God wants to use you as an example for others to learn from you. There's no great man without challenges. There's no great woman without challenges. Talk about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. All of them, they all went through it. Hannah, he was delayed, mocked by the rivalry. Hannah went to God and prayed, Lord, I need only one child. Not only one child God gave to Hannah. The Bible said, and Hannah had additional seven children. He overtook the rival who was mocking at him. That's why today, anyone who's mocking at your life, mocking at your destiny, receive power to overtake them all. In the name of Jesus. That is why Elijah said to Ahad, you can take lead. I am coming. When the spirit of the Lord came upon Elijah, he overtook Ahad. I see the spirit of the Lord coming upon you in the name of Jesus, upon your business, upon your company, upon your finances, in Jesus' name. You are an overcomer. All that God is looking from you it's your faith. It's your trust. The Bible said, those who put their trust in the Lord are the Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Did you have faith? Did you believe in Jesus? The man you said you believe in him. What was his story? The Pharisees, the Roman government, and the soldiers, they mock at him. They spit on him. They read insult on him. They naked him and disgrace him and nailed him on the cross and said, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. He said, if truly you are the king of the Jews. You are the son of God. Come down from, come down from the cross so that we will believe that truly you are a son of God. The one you say you believe, they crucify him. He have done no, no wrong. He haven't sinned. Yet, they say he was a sinner. They said he was a wicked man. He doesn't deserve to live. The righteous are suffering. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 5. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for this are the kingdom of heaven. Today, persecution are part of a believer life. It is our platform for our promotion. It is our platform for our blessings. Anytime persecution comes, anytime challenges come, it's a sign that door is about to open. It's a sign that God is about to raise you up. It's a sign that Heaven is about to remember you. And today, heaven will remember you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and God restore all that Job have lost. What have you lost in life? Have you lost your husband? Have you lost your wife? Have you lost your business? Have you lost your job? Have you lost 
your children, and you think God cannot restore. Whatever you are going through, Job passed through it. He lost his house. The house collapsed. His children all died. He was left with nothing. But the Bible said, and God restored. Today, whatever you have lost, God is going to restore it sevenfold. God is going to restore you back in the name of Jesus. Whether your business, your career, your marriage, whatever the enemy has stolen, God is restoring you today. Before the end of this week, Satan will know you are serving a living God. Before the end of this week, every mouth that mock at you, they will be put to silence. Every tongue that have accused you, the same tongue will praise you. In the name of Jesus, God is a God of wonders. That's why they call him God. He's able to restore. He's able to give life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believes in me, though he died, yet he shall live again. It doesn't matter whether your business is dead. God will give back to you. In Job 42, 12, the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. The latter part. That's where I like. The latter part. You know, the latter part of a man's life is the part of maturity. When God bless your beginning match, if you don't take time, you will enjoy life and forget God. But your latter part are the days of wisdom. You are passed through the ABC of life. You are able to handle property. You are able to handle wealth. We see the youth of today, when God blesses them, early, where do we see them? Drinking bars. They will buy one car. The next time they have asking they are dead. They become proud and arrogant. They don't go to church anymore. They are not insulting their pastors. Why? They have money. But when God bless your latter part, you have passed through it. You will be able to respect and serve God and respect your father and mother. That is why God doesn't count your beginning. Your beginning are full of mistakes. Study the world and see those who are blessed at their beginning, by the middle of their life, they will lose everything. But those who are blessed after 40s and 50s, they are able to maintain that blessing till the end. Why? They are passed through that challenges. They are passed through that trials. When God bless the latter part of Job, he knows that it is God who blessed me. It's not by my own wisdom. It's not by my own strength. It's not by my own connection. Because all his friends left him. His family left him. He know that I am what I am by the grace of God. No man can boast that he has helped me. That is why sometimes when God sees that your wealth or your children will become your God, God has a way of dealing with you. When God loves a man, he will discipline him. When God loves you, he will allow you to go through trials. Sometimes your marriage, sometimes your children, that is what that will bring you closer to God. Disappointment and not disappointment. It's God's way of blessing you. When you lost your property, it doesn't mean you have lost you. Before God, whatever you have lost before God, God added ten times. When Job lost his properties, his beginning of seven sons, God restored seven sons. Beginning three daughters, God restored three daughters. Beginning seven thousand sheep, the latter fourteen thousand sheep. Beginning three thousand camels, God restored six thousand camels. One thousand oxen restored two thousand oxen. Five hundred donkeys, one thousand donkeys. A large household. Job lived 140 years. The greatest man of the East. And saw his fourth generation. He saw what? His fourth generation. That means that his son married have another son. That son to also have another son. He saw what? Four generations. How many of us are able to live to see 110 years or 20 my job live 140 years. Because you put your trust in God. When you put your trust in God, no matter what witches are trying, you will never die. The purpose of God will surely come to pass. Anyone who wants you to die, this week, God will kill them for you. Anyone who dug a pit for you, they will fall by their own pit. In the name of Jesus, receive your blessing. Receive your restoration. Receive your honor. Receive your dignity. I see open doors. I see divine favor. I see promotion in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. You are honored in Jesus' name. See you next week. God bless you and your entire family. Wherever you are, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. 
I want to lift up your hand and say it well after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I am a sinner. Forgive all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is Greenland International Ministry, located at Anya Police Station, Cedar Wood Down. We worship here on Wednesday, which is Jacob Hour, from 8.30 to 2 p.m. Friday, 6 o'clock uh, p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 o'clock to 12.30 p.m. God bless you. My name is Prophet Elijah Ayipalo. So my number is 36. Thank you for the miracles in our lives today. Thank you for the miracles in our lives today. If that's you, I wanted to just miracle worker. Amazing miracle worker. Say thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the miracles in my life. In my life today. Thank you for the miracles. 